Good evening. Good evening and welcome to Cookie Land's Global Cooking Challenge. Uh, welcome to a uh, week 168 of 193 as we cook our way around the world. Tonight is night one of cooking the food of Switzerland. Welcome. So we are, uh, um, in, tonight we are making a dish from the French part of Switzerland. I uh, hope I get the pronunciation right, Pate Vaudois. Uh, and uh, it's going to be really hard to see, but Switzerland right there. Uh, tiny landlocked, uh, small landlocked nation between uh, France, Spain, Italy, and uh, I think it's Liechtenstein. Uh, hey, Anne Marie. Hello, welcome. Thanks for watching. Uh, so, I'm um, giving another second there to catch up before I get my lens on, flip things around. Hi. Hi. Hello. Scary me. Okay. So. Let's get crack a lack in here. Oops, I would probably need that Stand for this won't I? How is everybody doing this fine evening? Happy Friday and Hopefully we'll all get latched in here again. I get to show off my new globe So Switzerland way up here Oh boy, it's hard to see from this angle uh, let's see, it's going to be right there. So, uh, and we're over here, in case you're wondering, uh, on the east coast of Florida, in Jupiter. So, let us get moving here. Uh, this is a one-pot dish, uh, which uh, involves sausage and potatoes and leeks. And uh, there's a history to uh, part of that in that uh, potatoes weren't introduced uh, to the new world, uh, I mean to the old world, until they were brought back from the uh, Western Hemisphere and they were introduced in the 1700s to Switzerland after there was, um, it was difficult to get uh, other crops. So, uh, speaking of which, we need to get started with our potatoes. Uh, uh, I have a trouble in that I can only find yellow potatoes in the big old bag here, um, which kind of sucks. But uh, we're going to use three. I'm trying to do half of this recipe and not the entire thing because there's only two of us. And we have two other nights that we're going to be cooking also. That's what I hate about buying these bag potatoes. You're not really sure what you're going to get on the inside. So, three. Eins, zwei, drei. Uh, I, uh, my goal here this week is uh, for Switzerland to do one night of French Swiss, one night of the German Swiss, and one night of the Italian Swiss. Uh, I didn't realize this is about 60% uh, German speaking. Um, I thought they were more even, evenly distributed, but no. I'm gonna go uh, clean these off over there. I'll be right back. Don't go away. I know I'm gonna peel them, but I just uh, get kind of obsessive. And of course, we're listening to Swedish folk music. I couldn't find any Swedish folk music that was like labeled French. So, uh, had to go with all encompassing Alpine music here. Undi di Burk Burk. No, that was Swedish. That was last week. So, uh, again, for the uninitiated, uh, this is me. Uh, I started this project in 2012 to learn to cook by doing a different dish, uh, doing a dish from a different country in alphabetical order, working my right way around the world using the 193 UN nations as a guide. Um, and again, we are on week 168 of 193, uh, which means we end uh, Zimbabwe at the end of July. If you're uh, wanting to uh, find out more, you can check out the blog at cliffyland.com, right there, just add a .com on the end. And uh, you can uh, like us on Facebook, look for Cliffy Land, the Global Cooking Challenge. Uh, or on Twitter, follow at Cliffy Land. Or on, uh, right here on Meerkat, 
hit the little button right there. Uh, and uh, on Instagram or Pinterest or Tumblr and now on YouTube. Um, there's a teeny teeny weeny chance you might be watching this in the future on YouTube. Hey there! Subscribe to my feed, please. Thank you. Um, I've been trying to fill out the various forms for uh, the uh, crowdfunding or whatever, should anyone feel inspired to uh, financially help this project. Um, the uh, interesting thing about the UN and uh, Switzerland, Switzerland uh, known for its independence uh, and neutrality, uh, although there's you know some debate about that, um, as they were uh, neutral in the both world wars, ostensibly. Um, but uh, they're so neutral that they didn't become UN members until 2002, if you can believe that. Uh, I was kind of surprised to find that out. Uh, what else? Uh, it, uh, 1291, sort of when it was founded, when three, I think it's pronounced cantons, um, decided to, uh, join up in sort of like a confederacy. And then in something like 1848, they, you know, latched on with some more and established a constitution. They updated it in 18, something like 74. And, uh, they've been doing well. They're, um one of the richest nations on earth with the one the world's fifth longest life expectancy so doing quite well there uh notorious for well it's notorious but well known for their uh, secretive banking laws which uh there's pressure for them to reform and that's happening allegedly so um and uh, if enough people show up uh before the week is out, I will tell my story of how I almost died in Zurich. But um, I'll need to have enough of an audience for that one. So we'll see what happens. It's a Friday night here in Florida. Uh, we had a little bit of a scare today. I, actually, I'm, I'm kind of operating with one eye. Um, I was dilated in one eye today. Part of my regular hoo-ha. Um, but uh, I think I can see now. Hopefully. Um, it was kind of tricky to read my stuff. Okay, <laughs> yes. I, I really want to tell the story, but like I said, I need to, you know, and, and I want to know enough people are there to hear it so I don't have to repeat myself. Because I have three days that I'm cooking this. Or cooking in Switzerland, anyway. I reached out to this one friend of mine, well, acquaintance, really, who is uh, Swiss, I guess. Um, I mean, I knew him to be Swiss. I looked at his Facebook page, and I was like, he was born in Bolivia. But he went to school in, in Lucerne, so... I asked him for some input, but did not hear back. I don't know if he uh, either is not answering his messages or was bothered. I don't know. So, I had to go with this. Uh, feel better. Hey, Lavender Femchi, thank you. I will, uh, it's not that I feel bad, it's just I have to keep checking me out. Uh, going to negative 37 Celsius here tonight in Alberta. Oh my goodness, that's, that's too, too cold. Uh, Landing Point, thank you for the restream, Lavender Femchi. Makes sense. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, oh, I remember the line. It was like, my girlfriend Regina who lives in Alberta. No, I'm my girlfriend Alberta who lives in Regina. From Avenue Q. Okay, so we've got our potatoes soaking here, now we're going to dice them. Uh, so I've got uh, my knife all sharpened already. So. Uh, I always struggle with the whole making squares out of things that aren't squares. Uh, and I don't like to waste uh, too much when it comes to uh, the uh, potatoes. So, uh, this is, um, like I said, it's a one pot dish. Uh, it was used um, just as a way to, you know, like basically every, everywhere else in the world to use up, you know, everything you have with simple stuff. Uh, the uh, good to be caked out. Ah, yes. But notice I'm, I'm putting the scraps in too because that's just weird out over wasting stuff. I mean, when I cook, cook the shoestring, shoestring fries for the beef stroganoff from Russia, 
um, you know, wound up losing half of the uh, uh, potato. But um, at that point, I didn't really care. Um, the uh, this uses leaks, um, which I had not used before ever. I hadn't even really seen before. Um, I started this whole challenge. I've, I've used them a few times now. Um, and uh, the oh the sausage. We gotta look at the sausage I got, but I didn't get to use the sausage it's supposed to have because. Um, Ah, uh, I forgot the name now. But the do something? Uh, the sausage that one would normally have for this particular dish is, um, a, a, is unique to Switzerland, uh, which is a cabbage sa sausage. Basically, um, they, uh, ran out of meat to put in the sausage, so they, um, filled in the rest with cabbage. And it's kind of like a little fat, very fat, short sausage. Um, that apparently can't be found nearby. Um, I had the delight of having to call uh, various, uh, like the food boutique, as I call it, Love Leaks Like Onions. Yes. Um, so good to see you again, Lavender Femchi. Um, the, um... I had to call what I call the food boutique, where it's like the place to go for European stuff. Uh, it's also the expensive place to go in town, which is a drag. Uh, but I called them yesterday, I said, do you have cabbage sausage? And I said, what? Do you have cabbage sausage? What? Do you have cabbage sausage? Sausage that has cabbage in it. Cabbage sausage. No, I'm sorry, ma'am, we don't. You think I'd be prepared. It's happened to me enough times. You think I would have had, you know... Instead, I just kind of lost my... mind. Because it's like the umpty umpth time that's happened. And, uh... And about the second or third time it's happened when I've called that particular place, too. I know the whole Southern thing of giving respect and calling people sir or ma'am, you know, I, I dig that. But I'm so freaking sick. I mean, I know I have a high voice, I can deal with that. But good lord, you know, I'm not the only guy in the world with this voice. So, that was exciting. Uh, so rather than risk the same thing by calling the butcher shop, uh, because I got the same thing with them, um, yeah, like leaks, um, is that, uh, um, I just said, you know, screw it, I'm just gonna go in. So the butcher shop is known for European, um, stuff. Um, they, I've gotten, like, Bulgarian yogurt from them and things. I know they have a big Eastern European following. They have a lot of stuff written in Russian. Um, and Cyrillic, rather, in any case, uh, in, on their walls. So I walked in, I said, do you have, and I looked up the name, I had it in front of me at the time, and they said, mm -hmm. and I said, the cabbage sausage? It goes, mm -hmm. and it goes, I don't know what the, I said, this sausage has cabbage in it. it, goes, no, you're not gonna find that around here, and I said, that's what I was afraid of. So, uh, instead, um, I wound up with a bratwurst. Yeah, uh, they said, you can use a pork sausage, uh, or a veal sausage. So I went with the pork. He said the bratwurst, smoked bratwurst will work. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm disappointed. Uh, is Florida considered the deep south? Oh, the first is. Uh, yeah, they think you sound female. Oh, well, so stupid. Why don't uh, you say I'm Cliff and I will? That's interesting. Um, that's a good thought. Let me let me. It's gonna be weird, you know, to say hi. My name is and then whatever. But is uh, Florida considered the deep south? Uh, yes and no. Um, let me wash this and I will happily get into that one. Okay, so here's the deal about Florida. Florida's a very big state. Um, and, uh, most of it, geographically speaking, is most definitely the Deep South. It is, I mean, you can't get any more South. Uh, however, because of 
where most of the people live in Florida and the way people think of it, uh, the South is the last thing you think of is Maryland. Maryland is a border state. Um, Maryland uh, was, uh, actually I lived in Maryland. Um, so Maryland is a border state, which meant their sympathies were kind of like, eh, like this, they're in the Union, but not the Mason-Dixon line is like, you know, right divided them from Pennsylvania. So that kind of put them more on the southern side of things. So um, that, one's it. that one's just kind of like 50-50. But Florida, um, like everything, the panhandle all the way down to like Orlando is like super deep south. Then when you get to like Orlando and Tampa and stuff, then you get into like all sorts of other weirdness. Um, like Orlando now has become uh, like almost entirely Puerto Rican, which is my people. Um, and then like Tampa and all that is people from all over. And then from we are south, it's you know people from New York and and uh, Massachusetts and the Midwest and stuff going down till you hit the Miami Dade, and then it is 100% Latin America. It is the majority. It uh, in Miami-Dade County is the county in the U.S. where the most people uh, were born outside of the country. Um, it's really kind of well. So they say the further south you get, the less southern it gets. But the thing is, having grown up there, I know that despite all like everyone being from Latin America uh, or or beyond, that like you know Dixie whatever is still there if you look hard enough. Um, it's really kind of, uh, like, like a U-shape, bottom states. Yeah, it's, it's a peninsula. People say it looks like something nasty. Um, leaks. We get our leaks out. Now, I have this recipe, and, um, as such, uh, it said three. Uh, really, really which? It looks like something nasty or something else? Um, uh, let me clean this off, and uh, it takes uh, a little more delicacy to clean leaks also, so, uh, uh, Charmaine, Charmaine, now thank you for liking the restream, good evening, uh, we're making a papé, papé, papé vaudois. Which is a one pot uh, dish with uh, potatoes and leeks. These being the leeks. They look like leeks because they are leeks. So, to clean these, you're putting a slice in the middle like thus, and then like thus, and same for the other one. See, I wouldn't have known this until I uh, had to deal with this before. Hello, Charmaine, how are you doing? Sandy, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go this way and clean these off. See, I, I cut them thusly, and I'm gonna rinse them off to get any dirt out from the inside, so hold that thought. didn't don't cut yourself um, uh, no I, I'm okay thank you uh, so now the next question is I'm not sure exactly how far down to go because I forgot and I didn't go look up my old information uh, but what I'm gonna do is cut these into two inch strips is the object and once more I don't have an idea as to how long that is so I need to consult so that's about like yay long, almost a whole thumb. Okay. Uh -uh -uh. I'm guessing I'm just going down to here. Uh, the top green part is the sandiest where the leaves become solid. Aha! Creo. So I'm just gonna not include those, I gather. Am I right? Am I right on that? 
I'm thinking I'm right on that. Tell me if I'm wrong. Two inches. Swiss, Swiss bell ringers. Swiss, ah, there's all the dirt right in there. A bit of green, I think, mostly the whites. Uh, one thumb, joint, an inch. Yeah, I, I, this, my thumb came out to, I think, came out to two inches. Two inches, right there. One, two. Seems about right. Uh, yes, I see the sand now. So let me make sure those are clean. I'll Just to be on the safe side. Because I do see some yuck in there. Um, papa. Um, what's the hoots? Remember the I Love Lucy? And they went to, um, to, uh, Switzerland. And they wound up in, uh, we're in Lucerne. Isn't it great to be here in Lucerne? He no, we're not in Lucerne, we're in Lucarno. No, we're in Lucerne. Well, I sent the band to Lucarno. You went and hit my glasses, it's your fault. So then they all went to go hiking. And then they got trapped in the uh, in the cabin. Had to be rescued by the uh, Oompa Pa band. With the St. Bernard. I should watch that again. It's been a long time. I've seen every LL Lucy episode like a hundred million times. But now it's been years since I've watched one. Uh, cut that rinse if not frying. Yes, I just rinsed it. I think I missed Swedish meatball night. How did it turn out? Uh, it came out quite well. Um, I was a little confused um, because um, I hadn't really used the, uh, what you call, um, uh, cast iron skillet. I only like used it that one time before. And uh, so still, you know, getting the hang of it. Um, the, yeah, it came out right well, they kind of, um, thanks for liking me stream, Anne Marie. Um, the, uh, they got a little burnt, but apparently that's kind of how it goes. Um, they didn't look as pretty as they tasted. They tasted very good. Um, they tasted, uh, they tasted okay as leftovers, but that was one of those things that was really better, you know, when they were fresh. And they tasted quite good. Uh, I felt bad about the sauce. I kind of honked up the sauce on it um, between having the recipe and the cast iron and not knowing about the heat level um, it was really more like scrapings than gravy um, and then uh, I remembered to put the lingonberries on uh, on the end and it tasted really good uh, so I've gotten some use out of lingonberries now and I need to make sandwiches with them hey Kathy how are you doing so good seeing you thank you for the like and the restream how are you doing I've been catching people on the Periscope thing. Um, my feelings about Periscope haven't changed, but you know. Uh, I saw somebody stream the other day and they were kind of simulcasting on both, which is kind of I was thinking, but they were like going like this, reading the, uh, the comments from both, and I don't see how I could do that. Plus, I don't have two phones. I'd have to have like an iPad up and I don't have another hand thing for that and say hold on let me move you now I'm moving you it would be kind of weird just made a Greek salad do you have a good recipe on your blog for Greek dressing no not for Greek dressing if you have all day and uh, and, uh, and like a challenge the recipe uh, for the moussaka that I made for Greece uh, from Savour is out of this world but it really it takes all flipping day um, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, a little scared today. I was in the uh, market um, getting my stuff, and then suddenly my phone went, ah, 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 tornado warning, seek shelter. Do not go outside. So go to a safe place. Now, I'm like, oh my god. And I'm looking around, and I'm going, is anyone else getting an alarm on their phone? And I'm kind of worried. Hello? And everyone's just 
just going about their business and I was just sitting here like looking at trying to find the warning whatever and like the entire county is in like bright red like seek shelter now and then I see like oh funnel cloud in it's like way far away and this county is larger than the state of Rhode Island just so you know it's almost as large as Delaware so when they tell you it's on the other edge it's really far so I was thinking that seems a bit uh, oh it went away so we're under a watch until just you know about an hour ago um, yes, it was scary, um, but nothing happened, uh, but I got a little worried. So, um, uh, when I lived in Ohio, it, you know, that's a different, you know, here it's, I don't know, it seems to be like, surprise, tornado, no, not tornado. Um, a friend's house, oddly enough, who posted a picture that he was, you know, in the middle of all this, um, a couple years ago, I had heard there was a tornado out in the western part of the county, and I'll be damned if it didn't, like, hit his neighbor's house, and, like, only his neighbor's house, and it just went right by. So that was kind of, you know, when I went to visit him, I was like, oh, look, that's where my neighbor's house sort of still is, and where my backyard trees used to be, and everyone else is okay. Said, wow, that's weird. Ohio is kind of like, okay, it's coming there, it's going here, it's going across the highway, you know, get out, get in your basement now. Florida, we don't have basements. So it's just like, I don't know what to do. Just, you know, hope. Not, not go near windows. Usually we're dealing with, um, what you call, hey Santos, how you doing? Thanks for liking the restream, my good man, how have you been? How is life in the NYC? We are uh, making um, uh, pape vadois, a uh, one pot uh, leek and uh, sausage and potato dish. Uh, that is what is a happy crack a uh, Kathy, you're Michigan. I didn't uh, know that. Where in Michigan are you? Now, when I lived in Ohio, I went to Michigan a few times. Um, and when I lived in DC, I believe I am the only human being that ever purposely got in their car and took a week's vacation with no business or family reason just to take a vacation to go to Detroit. Had a good time. It was very nice. Saw the Motown Museum because I'm a huge, I'm a mega music fan. No basements in Florida. Why? Ha ha ha! Ah, because if you build a basement, you will be underwater. Because you just dig down far enough, we're on, a, we're on a limestone aquifer. So if you dig down, you're underwater. So, uh, hence, no basements. Not, unless, unless you build the house up, and then you build, you know, then you build the basement down. Uh, Sterling Heights, where is that? Um, I'm trying to get you away from uh, being blinded by the light up there. Um, shush, 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 shush. But no, I went to Detroit. Um, I went to the Ford Museum, which is super cool. And um, and I got to see a house on fire, which was like really, you know, very Detroit. I, you know, we drove, we said the car's traffic was backed up. And I was like, no, 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 why? Oh, because there's a house like raging fire. And I was inching past this house on fire and the car was like getting, you know, like really hot inside. And I was like, go faster, we're gonna burn to death. It was, uh, we had the full Detroit experience for that one. Um, that was, uh, 2008. It was. Uh, so. Uh, but then we went to Saugatuck a couple times, which we liked. And Grand Rapids. Um, we went to the, uh, the, the, the Kellogg Museum. Before it closed down. So we got to see Tony the Tiger. And learn uh, how that all got started. Uh, right, Everglades. Everglades are just um, well. The, you know, look at Florida. You got the lake in the middle, Lake Okeechobee, which is like what the fifth largest lake in the country, or something like that. Um, and uh, the Everglades technically is everything south, because before people, you know, the water just poured across the grass down into the ocean. Uh, which was the Everglades. Now, like, we built up everything, so we kind of rejiggered it. So, technically, if I drove, like, you know, you know, five miles, only, you know, five miles to the uh, west of here, 
um, you know, I'd be in what approximates the Everglades. Um, what I love about the ecology here, which I remember when, you know, I was learning about it growing up, was um, that it's so varied. So uh, where we are, the uh, topography, the, the, the plants and such are one thing. Uh, drive down two hours to like Miami and go to the Everglades there and it's very different. House on fire, very Detroit. Yeah, it was... Oh. Uh, hey, remember me? Hey, Bunny is funny. How are you doing? Welcome back. Uh, Anne-Marie, I watched a stream today on a burning house in Detroit. Oh, you did? Oh, that is just sad. It's sad. It's just sad. So we're trying to mince um, this uh, on onion as much as I can. I may uh, take out my, um, what do you call, um, dem, uh, me, uh, the, uh, my mm, thingy that I bought, which I'm, Mezzaluna, Mezzaluna, I keep thinking Demi or something, but it's no Mezzaluna, uh, but I might be able to do it with the ye old knife. Um, pa, pa, um, pa, pa. Uh, I watch it. Yes, okay. So, um, but I like Detroit. I, I, um, well, Detroit was kind of sad, but you know we all know that. Um, uh, but it was no, it was nice. The museums were outrageously fantastic. So, um. Curious. No, but Everglades, uh, when you go down um, to like Miami and then go uh, west, you hit uh, Shark Valley, which is sort of like the, if you want to see the Everglades, that's kind of like the place you go. It's kind of technically on the northern end of it. Um, and then you take a tram ride and out into, and you go past like hundreds of uh, alligators that are just sitting there saying, hi, as you go by. Um, are you a hockey fan, anyone? Sorry, no. Um, friends back in Columbus, uh, are, are crazy for the Blue Jackets. Um, and I got taken to a game. And I went. I was glad I had someone to chat with, because I couldn't make heads or tails about anything that was going on. I just said, okay, if the puck goes in the goal, I know that's a good thing. They seemed, I thought, I didn't think that the fighting was still like the primary reason people watch. So I was kind of surprised by that. Um, but you know, and I like that it was cold inside. Cause you know, well, I, well, it was cold outside too. So it really didn't make much difference. But as a kid in Miami, I would like go ice skating to the, the then ice skating rink. And I was like, oh, it's so great. You can go somewhere it's cold or it's so freaking hot outside. Uh, nope, I like soccer. Uh, only when the Red Wings are in the finals, lol. Uh, we have a team, I think. Florida something? It's Miami something? Which is insane because, I mean, there is not a, I can't imagine there's a soul here who is not originally from Canada who, like, follows hockey in South Florida. I think we have a team. I believe, I believe we have a team. It's weird. I, again, that's one thing I really should know. But when I lived in Columbus, it was, I found it odd that uh, so many of the guys I knew there were like heavily into sports. Which, uh, not from my background. Under that much snow, I don't miss that. Panthers, that's it. Panthers. Oh, you can drive four miles west and see an actual Florida panther. There's a wildlife sanctuary nearby here. Where they kind of rescue the ones that are like, you know, in trouble. And then if they can nurse them back to health and send them out, they do. If they can't send them back out, they just keep them there. Uh, okay. I also got a new toy over the Christmas holiday. Ta-da! It's go, gotta go. We'll try to pop in a bit. Great, Kathy. Thanks for coming by. Um, 
I am going to try my little scale here just to see how it works because it's kind of magic. I tried it out when I was seeing how much butter I had, how much uh, cream I had. So I'm just really curious how this is going to work because. Uh, I did the math, and it was all a metric. Um, Roberto Luongo is the Panthers goalie. Really? Is he, is he, he has to have been born in Kent. I mean, isn't like everyone who's the hockey like not born in the US? For the most part? But a name like that. That's curious. I mean, because there was, a, like I said, when I was a kid, there was only one ice skating rink in all of South Florida. And I went to it to go ice skating, and I enjoyed that. Uh, I did not do well, but I enjoyed it. I was a much better roller skater. I was I was the disco disco skater. So this one is magic, supposedly. So we're starting from zero, and uh, not fluid ounces. I want ounces. So I want uh, 5.2 ounces. Are you kidding me with this? That much? Holy. Oh my god, there it is right there. Four ounces. Holy... That's four ounces, all right. Good night. So a quarter of this. So... Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two. Wow, that is a lot of butter. Holy crap. That's a stick and a half of butter. That's a lot of butter. Scale, yes. Uh, so the new toy, yes. Used to be a goalie for Vancouver. I don't like skating. Um, I, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't good at ice skating because um, my ankles. I, I just found that weird, you know, having to, uh, uh, you know, balance on the middle of the foot. Because I was used to roller skate. Roller skating, I could just go crazy nuts uh, with the wheels. But not so much as this is a lot. Look at that! That's a lot of butter. That's a whole lot of butter. Wow. That is a ton of butter. That's like Paula Deen level butter. Wow. Yeah. That strikes me as strange. Three quarters of a cup. That 5.2 ounces of butter. Let me double check on the recipe, make sure I didn't, you know, like not cut that in half, because I very well could have. But if that's half, I can't imagine a full. Um, yes, I know. Uh, plus, uh, where am I? Here, you, and uh, the papier badois, and drum roll, please. No, I hate this. Food.com is always asking for my location. Uh, 330 grams. How many ounces is 15 grams? The answer is 0.53 ounces. Wait a minute, that's not right. No, 30, 15 grams. 5.3. I feel really stupid. Point five, I put the I put the period in the wrong place. I'm I'm glad I checked. I'm glad I checked. I feel really dumb right now. I do that a lot. Okay, zero. Zero. How about just this much? Instead of all that much. Bye. See, if I could just said two tablespoons, I would have been happy. Stupid me. Okay. I gotta clean that off. No butter. Okay, that's better. How many grams, Cliff? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, um, it was 30 uh, in metric, but it basically came out to two tablespoons for the half of the recipe. So, down to that much. Bye. Okay, moving on. A metric. Yes, I would. I would rather be metric, but um, unless like I'm doing it all that way from here to eternity, um, I can't flip back and forth. You see how easily I get confused this way. 
Uh, so we're going for one and a quarter cups of white wine. And I bought me some ill bottles of white wine so I don't have to open the like as I mentioned before, we really don't drink wine around here. So if I open a bottle of wine for cooking, it's just gonna sit there until the next time I need another bottle of wine for cooking. And then there'll be vinegar by the time that happens. So going for one and a quarter cup. Again, I'm having the recipe. That's almost a cup. 100 grams is one quarter cup. 100 grams is a quarter cup. See, here's another thing. Um, between the metric and the whatever, um, going from weight to cups and teaspoons, uh, look, I get really confused. And I keep asking Siri and says, sorry, I can't convert this to that. I'm going, thanks a lot, you're a big help. So, you know, finding out how many uh, grams of whatever equals how many tablespoons uh, is weird. Uh, kind of used to metric, uh, but like U.S. in cooking. Uh, I mean, since I always am looking online for recipes, and they're from different countries, uh, and if they're ever from said countries, it's always going to be metric. Um, so, I'm um, forever having to, to do the change, and so that's why I wind up with things like you know, preheat the oven to 382 or something like that. Um, okay, beef stock. Next, we're going for beef stock. Um, you know, that didn't... It makes it so much slower when I go this way, but... I'm gonna have to measure everything up uh, and put it in bowls first, but it's the way I am. Okay, beef stock, we're opening a fresh one. Here, I must have used up what we had before. Kilograms, kilometers, liters, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and honest to God, I was so excited in sixth grade when they were telling me, oh, you know, by, you know, by the year, by the year you graduate high school, we will be, the U.S. will be completely on the metric system. I'm thinking, yay, that seems so much easier. And then an election happened, and then it didn't. Then, then we didn't, then we kind of stopped midway through. So we have our two liter bottles of Pepsi still, but no one knows, you know, a liter from a quart from a whatever. And I forgot to measure. Um, we're going for one and a quarter of this. Again, I having the recipe. And I hope, um, and I did not, the one thing I did not uh, change was the uh, amount of uh, seasoning. I'm leaving that at the full amount. Is it 100 milliliters for, I don't even, I just asked Siri. And whatever she says, or he says, mine is a he. So, beef stock. Uh, there are a variety of different recipes for this, um, I found, and some of them didn't even involve the beef stock at all. Um, I picked this one because uh, it seemed to be, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, half a cup of, of cream. Of, uh, I can't believe we still have cream left. Uh, I've been using it since Swaziland, and only this much, and I can't believe I still have like about half of that left. I've used it for like four recipes so far. We have French and English on everything in Canada. See, yeah, I know that, and um, I, I would be better at my French if that were the case here. I took like six years of French, but uh, so much of it is like evaporated from my head. Which I think is sad. I still have some left here. Um, because uh, I was wanting to know how to have pronounced Papé Vaudois. I hope that's the right pronunciation. Um, and I went looking online. And there was some guy, some comedy bit I guess, uh, involving this. And this guy is just talking at the camera. And I was ca I was getting like every sixth word. Um, so when I watch foreign films in French, you know, I always think I'm understanding more than I am because I really am reading the subtitles. But between the Spanish and the French and six years of Latin, did I? I cannot believe I actually took six years of Latin. I 
did, I did. I took six years of Latin. That's insane. I mean, you know, not like, you know, college courses. I mean, we're talking like from sixth to twelfth grade. But by towards the end there, we're getting to like the pluperfect and stuff like that. And I was like, uh At a certain point, the Latin, like Latin is so much like Romance languages. So it's like Spanish and French, I felt like I had a head start, you know, between that and having a large vocabulary, I was, you know, thinking, yeah, I'm doing well. And then when it got into the, the, the high level part, suddenly it becomes like German. And I was thinking, holy crap, now it's like very much like German and I just, then I started losing it. Uh, my daughter's bilingual, she's a CPA, that's great. Um, when I went to, um, I'm getting my salt and pepper here and it seems silly that I'm measuring it out, but I am. Um, the, uh, I was in Paris a few years ago and they, uh, went to a restaurant and I went, I sat down and I asked for a table in French and, you know, and then they, you know, sit us down and the server comes up and is speaking in French and I'm getting kind of what she's saying. But I was saying in Spanish, in Spanish, in French, I was saying, you know, slow down. And oh dear, you know, she didn't realize that I didn't really speak French because she didn't speak English at all, which is very odd. Um, I mean, I thought everyone there like spoke like multiple languages. Not that I think people should have to speak English. And, um, and I said, no, 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 you stay here. We're gonna work this out. And we got through it. I said, don't call for your manager. You and I, we're gonna figure this out. You talk to me in French, I will understand you, and we'll get, we'll get this ordered. It was a lovely evening. But anywhere else, I'd be like, ah, and they go to, and they just switch to English. I'm like, oh, come on. Give me a chance. That happened in Montreal, too. It's like, I'm going, I'm trying to speak French, and I'm like, no, I don't have time to bother you with your, you and your high school French. I have a life to live. So. Don't think I took French in college. Okay, salt and pepper. Meanwhile, uh, nutmeg. We need a lot of nutmeg. Two tablespoons of nutmeg, in fact. Like I said, I didn't cut down um, the um, seasoning. Maybe she didn't feel like speaking English. Um, well, no, the, the server didn't understand English. So that's why she was panicked, thinking, oh my god, I'm not going to be able to understand this person. Um, it wasn't like she was being rude or anything. She just genuinely, you know, didn't really know it. And, uh, so, but she was lovely. Lovely, lovely person. I mean, every, everyone we met in France was just absolutely lovely. It's like, you know, all that whole stereotype thing, you know, was, was horse pucky. Nutmeg. So got a lot of nutmeg. Doesn't smell too much. I mean, it's probably been in existence here since before I started cooking. So this could be very, very old nutmeg. They should have dates on them when when you got them. Uh, but we'll get finish it soon. So I think we are ready to go. My uh, sausages, my bratwurst, are in the fridge, and I will take them out when the time comes. Uh, okay, here we go. Time to start going. Hey, Derek, how you doing? Got here just in time. We are about to start cooking. So let's uh, get the correct amount of butter. Thank you for the like and the restream, Derek. Again, I was uh, checking out the, the Periscope today and stuff. I wish I liked it more. I mean, the only thing I really like about it is the map thing. And the uh, and the port and the landscape view thing. Those are two things I like. The rest of it I'm not so crazy about. But I was you know seeing like Funky Fairy and seeing how Rob you know they're all over there now, and how Rob is at the the big Periscope meeting thing in um, in San Francisco, and so he was broadcasting from there, and I thought well that's nice and. And David Dorian Ross showed up and stuff, and I was like, hey, I miss seeing your streams, and I didn't know what his deal was. I uh, would love to get to the museum to see Julia's Kitchen someday. Oh, that was in, um, uh, in, uh, in D.C. 
Um, I just saw that at the Smithsonian just a few months ago. That was super cool. If the little picture thingy here, you know, worked uh, to go way, way, way back, I would like show you a picture of it. Because yeah, you see her, her kitchen and it's all very tall because they built it up for her, for her height. And, um, and then you see the one wall because it would be the fourth wall is, you know, out. So there's a big plexiglass and she'd hang all her, her pots and pans on the wall. And, uh, and I guess, I mean, I, I think in the movies, her, she and her husband like worked on the whole thing. Uh, but you see the outlines of every pot and pan in the plexiglass. And if you look at the wall beyond it, which is behind you, that's where the stuff is actually hanging. And you see like the racks on top where the camera zoom back and forth. And uh, there's, I've got a picture of myself standing next to a stand-up of her, and she's like that much taller than me. I am not a tall man. I am not a tall man. Ah! Yes, you said awesome. Ah, indeed. I didn't know if it was just accidental that you mentioned that, or if you'd remembered. If you were part of that conversation. I should have known. should have known you were here. You... My faithful viewers. Um, okay, so we're melting the butter, and then I'm gonna uh, until uh, then I'm gonna add the onions until uh, they're soft. The minced onions right here. Um, hey, that's a better light. And uh, the millionth picture of me dropping onions into some form of fat. Go. Until they're soft and not browned. And I, I'm using my, my um, older skillet here because again, the whole warping action. So now I'm finding myself walking past the displays of the ceramic and the non-stick things and feeling like replacing them. Because again, I have like, I have this one here, which is, Wobbly. I'm using gonna use that to boil my sausage later. In moments. But yes, uh, from Sweden. Oh my God, it was crazy. So my blog is up on Tumblr technically, but if you go to cliffyland.com, you'll just find it. Oh, hi. Mm. Darling, thank you. Um, I I usually don't see the camera when it comes up. Um, the, um, but it's on Tumblr. <clears throat> I don't know if you know Tumblr, um, but you can like something, uh, you know, hit a little heart, love it, uh, or you can restream it or reblog it, and then it goes forward, just kind of like you would do on Twitter, except for, um, when you're on, um, on Tumblr, there's no date attached to anything, so something that's, like, years old can, like, resurface and keep moving along, because no one knows, you know, what date it was written or whatever. So, for instance, my post from El Salvador, which is uh, like the controversial one, you've probably heard me whining about that whole situation, um, has had like so many blogs and likes and restreams or reposts because, um, and I assume many of them because they didn't approve. But maybe most of them really liked it. But overnight, just today, I found out like, you know, there was like, I came back and there was like 30 you know, comments and reblogs on my Sweden post, just overnight. Most of my posts don't get 30 anything in their lifetime, so I thought that was kind of funny. Just some Swedish official something reblogged it, so it just kind of went from there. So once we have this going, we are going to add our leeks and our potatoes. Okay, got our leeks over here. Uh, uh, uh. In our potatoes, which you need to drain. Unsalted butter. Got that pick. Thank you. Oh, good. Yes, it is unsalted butter. Um, I just always pick unsalted butter because I figure it's better to add the salt yourself. I mean, that's just my thought on it. I could be wrong. Okay. So these are definitely softened and not get browning, so that's good. So we're going to add our leeks, leeks in. Okay, 
and our potatoes. I hope this works. I mean, they said skillet, so I purposely chose a skillet for this. I hope that was not a mistake. Uh, me too, I only use unsalted. Uh, you could call that big pot Balboa. <laughs> Hello from the US. Hello, where in the US are you? We are in the US also. Uh, yeah, so I'm cooking the food of Switzerland. Uh, the concept here, and I'm talking over the frying, is that, uh, um, oh, hold on, let me get my salt and pepper in here. And I'm taking pictures for the blog. More in a moment, if you are just joining us. Salt. Pepper. And nutmeg. So, um, in 2012, after not ever cooking, never learning to cook, and staying away from the kitchen for <clears throat> most of my adult life because of a uh, horrible, horrible, horrible accident when I was in college, um, I decided to learn to cook, doing, uh, started in Afghanistan. So I was cooking a different country in alphabetical order, uh, one country a week, as a week number 168 of 193, Food of Switzerland. Uh, hello, North Carolina. How are you doing? Greetings, Tar Heel. So, uh, salt, pepper, nutmeg. Now we're going to add the wine. The beef stock. Am I right? Yes. And then we're going to cover it and let it simmer for about 25 minutes, um, which is a good time. Uh, amazingly, I might be uh, my, my timing might be okay. So I'm gonna let that come to a boil and then I'm gonna simmer it. Got my got my lid right here. Love it, love it, love it. Yummy. Yes. And meanwhile, while that goes, um, I need to let that come to a boil. We're going to pre-boil our sausages. Uh, I am a little confused on this part because um, I'm, you know, again, learning. Uh, I haven't dealt with sausages a whole lot. Uh, when back before Meerkat, when I cooked Germany, um, I went way down to, um, it's more than an hour south of here in uh, Broward County near Fort Lauderdale. There's apparently a German community and there's a German market there and they had all these German people all lined up for the very, very specific sausages. Um, and if I wanted to go that far, I probably could have found that cabbage sausage, which would be what would be the most authentic for this dish since I could not find the uh, vod, yes, uh, sausage, um, I had to go with bratwurst. But I didn't know like cooked versus uncooked. Uh, for Germany, I specifically said uncooked. Um, so that's what I got. Uh, this, the guy said it's smoked, it's cooked. And so I'm a little confused. So I hope I don't hunk it up, basically. So we're going to cover you, let you simmer for 25 minutes. Hello. Hello from the other side. And now we're going to get over here to boil our <clears throat> uh, the sausages. Sausages. And I'm only using two since, um, there are only two of us. Uh, again, I, 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 maybe it was bad to pick the wobbly, uh, but I'm just boiling water on this one, so I hope that's not that big a deal. I've got my sausages, which only come in packages of four. 
doesn't German sausage have very little fat compared to, say, Italian? Uh, maybe. Um, honestly, there were so many choices there. It was it was craziness. There were, I mean, this is, you know, a couple years ago now. Uh, but yeah, there was just... I mean, they, this place is like the place in Florida to go to get your fresh sausage. Your authentic fresh German sausage. These, these people make it themselves. They package them for... Um, this is not the people I'm talking about. This is a different butcher shop, which are very good, but they're not, you know, German. So this is this is this is the bratwurst that I got, which I need to open. I really don't know the details. I don't know the details. Um, while that comes to boil, let me uh, go over here and open up my package. That didn't sound good. Um. <laughs> I'm only using two. When I did Germany, it was really cool because, um, well, I, I did I used the grill outside, which I kind of hate using. Um, and uh, now we have no propane, so I don't have to. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, I did the whole thing. I soaked it in beer. I just filled up that thing with, you know, beer. And then I soaked it and cooked it in beer, and then I put it on the grill. It tasted really good. I mean, it was worth it, but the sauce just cost a pile of money. And they were big. They were, like, really big. Um, check out that blog post for in info on that one. I haven't reviewed that one for a while. That was week number 68. This is 106... That was... No, that was week 64. We're on 168 now. So that was two years and a month ago. So here we're gonna drop our sausages in the water to pre-boil. That's what it says, to pre-boil. I don't understand how you boil it and you're calling it a pre-boil. I don't understand that. But that's what it says. Oopsie doopsie, back up. It specifically said just enough water to cover. So let's try that again. Okay. One more time. Just enough water to cover, it said. It was very specific about that instruction. Uh, the city I live in has it all underground wiring, including all power poles. They should do that here. I'm lucky the exact location where I am is new enough and we are close enough to the you know, power company headquarters or local headquarters that um, many of our power lines are underground here, which is very important because of hurricanes, because um, we get hurricanes here, um, but not we don't, most places don't. But I'm so particular about power going out that I, when I pick the place, I, that's, that's the thing I consider. I have to find out where the electricity is and how long the power is out when the power goes out. Because I lose my, my ever-loving mind when the power goes out. It's like, I'm, uh, uh, you, don't, you, don't want to, you don't want to see me when I'm angry. You won't love me when I'm angry. I lose my mind when the power goes out. When I lived in Maryland, <clears throat> I am, this is not an exaggeration, every time it rained hard, the power would go out for about five to six hours at a time. So it would be like four o'clock in the afternoon, I'd be at work, I'd call home, I'd say, did you get home? Yes. Did the power go out? Yes. And then we know the power wouldn't come back on again until four in the morning. At least once a month. I spent like the 90s like that. That, oh my god. So I have like, uh, yeah, PTSD on that. So uh, the idea is to cook the sausages until they're two thirds done, uh, depending on the size of them between 15 and 30 minutes. Lol. <clears throat> so, that. Um, takes a while for the water to come to a boil, eh? Well, I'll turn it up a little. Uh, meanwhile, um, simple basic thing, I need to get my parsley ready. 
Uh, but since I got to put meat down on this, and I need to make sure, yes, um, that this is clean. Can't cope with possibility of infection. You know, I was watching Top Chef again last night, and I, I just, I have so many questions. I mean, partially it's like the cooking side of it. And the other part is the reality show side of it. Because, uh, you know, I've met people, who have known people who run reality shows. And, uh, and the production is like my big question. And so certain things I know, you know, the, the how the, how certain things work, but um, but in terms of the cooking, they're doing um, a thing. They're out in the middle of a golf course or in the, on a pier, and they have like 30 minutes to cook something. And they've got like chicken, and they've got hot peppers and whatever. And I'm thinking, where's the water? How are they washing their hands? How are they, you know? And someone was talking about being careful about working these chili peppers and not touching their hands and uh, touching their eyes, and I was thinking, yeah, um, uh, but I'm thinking, you've got like all this stuff going on, and the guy's just coming along and touching the raw chicken, going, mmm, that's good, and then he walks away. I'm like, what? No. I mean, he knows better than I do about how his food works, but still, I, there's a lot of stuff they're obviously not showing. And the guy I know who is like an actual, you know, chef testant, who, um, friendly enough with to like correspond. Um, I don't want to bother him to just ask him that basic question. He's busy living his life. Ahem. The other ones I know, I'm Facebook friends with, but you know, not, not, you know, they would be, they'd say, they would know who I am. There's one of them who knows who I am. Uh, oh yes, parsley. We are getting our parsley together. Uh, so, we have some time while this boils. Okay, don't don't bump your head. I'm turning that down so it doesn't freak me out. You stay. Okay, parsley time. Let me get some more power while we're at it. This little folk song um, goes on just about for two and a half hours. There's a whole lot of Swedish folk songs. Uh, I mean, Swedish? No. Uh, Swiss. Uh, oh, do you have a cat or a dog, Cliffy? Do you have a... Or do you have a live meerkat, lol? A meerkat would be cute, but no, we have a big, big, big fat kitty. He's not fat like as an overweight. He's fat in that he's, like, huge. Uh, I think he is a, um... A Norwegian forest cat. I mean, not officially. I mean, we believe that's what he is. He's a, he's a rescue. Um, and makes the best martinis on Meerkat. Ooh. Ah, okay. The husband is the martini maker here. Okay, parsley. I'm just getting parsley real quick. Um, also helps kill time while I'm sitting here waiting. Now, I don't know about that just cover because, I mean, the water is going to evaporate. That's kind of how water works. It said just covered, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Parsley. Still fresh-ish. No, I, I just got it last week, so. Uh, how many people we got here? Do we have enough people? I'm debating telling my story. You got time? Do you want story time with Cliffy? Okay. I thought I was going to save this for the day that I'm cooking Zurich. But I'll probably be too busy when I'm cooking that one. Because uh, I've got plans and it seems it's going to be very, very involved. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing that particular dish on um, Sunday or on Tuesday. Uh, depends on uh, if my Swiss friend gets back to me. Because I've got plans uh, that, in, you know, there's one dish that's very, very basic. And I said, I don't want to be that basic. And I said, I need to complicate things. And so, I can do two basic dishes, but then it turns out being three basic dishes, but all at the same time, which suddenly, you know, ups the difficulty level. But one of them 
is a dish that I actually did before, uh, pre-Meerkat. But you'll like it. You'll like it a lot. Okay. Do you have enough people here? Okay, 47 people. 47 people can hear my story. Okay, so I was about 12 years old, and we were on one of these tours of Europe. If you've ever seen the movie, um, if this is Tuesday, it must be Belgium. Um, that's what that's what this trip was. Uh, if you've never seen that movie, uh, if you have Netflix, Netflix it tonight. You will thank me later. It's a very, very funny movie. Starring Suzanne Pochette and um, Ian McShane, famous for Deadwood now. Back when he was a young, strapping young man. Um, in any case, we uh, were in Frankfurt, Germany, uh, on this whirlwind trip, and uh, we were woken up to some really, really tragic news um, on the phone. Um, and it was very, very upsetting. And particularly to my mother. And we knew that we could not fly back to the States. Um, we were kind of stuck out there in Europe. So she was rather despondent, and um, so we trudged along with the tour, and uh, we got to Zurich by bus. And my mom, being understandably upset, um, decided to stay in the hotel. And little Cliffy decided, you know what, you know, they said, hey, we need to distract the kid. So um, uh, I had seen this map in the uh, hotel of a tour of Zurich. And it was a little, like, cartoony map, you know, with old trees and, you know, had da-da-da and go here and take this train and walk here and so-and-so. And, -so. and I said, oh, Dad, look, we'll take this little tour. Now, my dad, you know, was much younger, but even then had, like, you know, a heart condition. Uh, so, you know, he couldn't do everything that I could do at 12. And, um... So, he, uh, we walked to the edge of town to get the train. There's little trains that go through the city. Then I was surprised that no one ever took your ticket. They just kind of honor system that you bought a ticket. Um, but, oh, I'm gonna use my Mezzaluna for this. Uh, the, uh, we go out to the, the intercity, the inside the city train, and uh, we're going, oh, where's this train? They go, no, 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 you have to go out there. And it's made like, and now I know it's like the, the commuter rail. Now I know what to be like a commuter rail. But um, that was like out on the edge that took you way out to the mountains that surround the city, up into the mountains. And here we're on the train with all these, you know, mountain, you know, people who lived up in the mountains and commute down into the city all on this train. And we're just going out and out and further and further and further. And my dad's, and we're going up, 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 higher, higher into the mountains. And my dad's going, where the hell are we going? Why are they sending tourists out here? And we get out there, and then we're walking on this very large trail. Uh, simple circle, thank you for the like. Uh, on this mountain trail, which is very wide, it's like a road. And it's, you know, gently sloping. But the altitudes were very, very high. And we're walking, and we're walking, and now it's getting a little smaller, a little narrower, and a little steeper, going up and down. And my dad's going, how long is this go? And he's getting really tired. And then I look at the map, and I go, oh, we're about this far in. And it's like that much to go. Hey, Danny, how you doing? Thank you for the restream. So, um, he says, really? I'm going to keep walking. And then he's getting tired, and he's like, oh, I don't know my heart can take this. How far have we gone? And I show him on the map, because I think we've gone that far. And goes, oh, are you kidding me? There's no way we're making it that far. There's no way. And, okay, let's get out of here. I said, well, how do we get back to the city? We've already walked so far. And he says, hey, let's look down. Hey, Danny. So he says, uh, we look on the map. And like I said, there's a cartoony map. And there's like little trees and little, you know, paths between. But it was like a cartoon. It wasn't like an actual, like, to scale map. And I said, I don't know. We can go left here. And he goes, okay, so now we're walking down a smaller paved road, which is steep, down, going down like this. And we're going down, and we're going down, and we're going down. And then another fork in the road, and now it's narrower, and now it's like, like this. And we're going down, and we're going down, and we're going down, and going down. And then another fork in the road, now there's no more pavement, and it's just gravel. Good, good to hear, Danny. Um, and it's just gravel, and we're going like down, like straight down. And we're holding onto trees, going down the side of this mountain. And we're freaking out. Little old Swedish ladies are walking up in their little hiking boots, like chomp, 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 going right up the mountain. And we're like, eh, 
And then we're just going down the mountain and we can't see the bottom. Darren, thank you for the like. Um, and we're just going through the trees. All of a sudden, I hear gunfire. I mean, a boom, crashing things, crashing around me. And the things are like falling down from the sky. And then boom! And we're going, we're freaking out, thinking, oh my god, my, now we're gonna die. We're gonna die here in the mountains of Switzerland. And finally, you know, after I don't know how long, hours and hours, it's starting to get dark. We're finally down at, near the bottom of the mountain, and we finally land in like some suburb um, where, you know, people have their gardens and stuff. And we're walking through, and I asked this, you know, family friend, woman who sort of raised me. She spoke German. I'd asked her for, to teach me German before we went. And I learned just a few enough phrases to, to get around, um, but not enough to understand the directions that people gave me. Some prompt this little Swiss girl in her garden, and I was saying, how do I get back to the hotel? And she tells me, and I don't understand. And uh, this keeps going on through every person we encounter until hours later, way after dark, we finally get home or to the hotel. And my dad is just so relieved to finally be home. But I'm hungry. So we go down. There's a big banquet happening downstairs for all the people. There's some guy who's a special guest who is wearing... A sash, like he looks like a cartoon. He's wearing the sash with the medals and all the stuff and the epaulets. Uh, and I'm thinking, wow, who the hell is he? And um, he was saying that he was um, some sort of prince or something from, you know, Dubai or something. And I was thinking, oh, that's very interesting. And I was telling him I knew where it was. You know, this very precocious little kid with the geography and all. I said, oh, I know where that is. That's right here in, da -da, in Abu Dhabi. And, says, uh, and he's like, oh, yeah. So well, I was out in the mountains just nearby here skeet shooting today. And I was thinking, that was me. You almost killed me with the thing and the thing, the skeet coming down on our head. I was almost killed by an Arab prince in Switzerland in the mountains. I was stuck with my dad. Thank you. Um, I, I, I just acquired them. Knife skills, that is. And this really helps a ton. This mezzaluna, I just got it for Christmas. So that's my story of almost dying in uh, Switzerland. For the uh, 24 hours I was in Switzerland. It was a very, very fast trip. Something like 28 countries in 30 days. By bus. With 300 Cubans and 3 Puerto Ricans. We being the Puerto Ricans. So, uh, this is our uh, parsley, which is going to go on the uh, finishing end of this. And thank you for putting up with my story time. See, so, yeah, the way I, I've been holding off on telling that story since, like, the thought of it came up to me, like, several countries ago. But I said, no, I'm going to save it for Switzerland, because it happened in Switzerland. You are bulletproof! <laughs> No. Uh, <laughs> that was proven in reality at one point. But that's a different story. Okay. But Derek, you're very nice. Thank you. No, I'll save the story about me getting shot for another time. I mean, it is, it is America after all. I mean, who doesn't have a story about getting shot? Okay, our water is a bubbling, and it said, you know, just barely covered, so the water is evaporating, which is kind of what happens when you boil it. Um, we have our cream, we have our parsley, and uh, I'm going to dump the garbage here, and it is 7.19, and the husband is shopping for birthday cards.
ta-da! Uh, so where are we? Uh, we have a couple minutes to go on the bah, bah, on the uh, sausages, etc. Uh, and uh, so let's see how that's going. So that's bubbling, as you can see. The water is um, obviously evaporating to a degree there, and our cabbage, uh, no, rather our leeks and potatoes are simmering as well. Uh, wow, but you haven't been shot, have you? Yes, yes, I have. That, like I said, that's a different story. As I say, it's America. Who hasn't been shot? Yeah. See, it's kind of funny that, um, the husband hears me tell these stories, like, you know, all the time. And he's always said, oh, you should record them for posterity in some fashion. And I said, well, you know, to sit down and write them all down would take, like, forever. And I'm really just more better with the spoken word. And he said, well, can you videotape them or something? And I said, well, it would seem kind of morbid to just say, okay, I want to hear and record all these. So, like, when I die, you can, like, play them back. It's, you know, um, kind of creepy that way. Uh, but this way, you know, they're there. I want to hear it next stream. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll dovetail into it with uh, Switzerland having almost as many guns. No, no. There was a point they had almost as many guns as we do. We kind of passed them. We, like, we, we passed everyone. Ah, sausages. It said until they're about a third done, or two thirds done. Um, help me out here. Uh, two thirds done. I don't know exactly how I would possibly tell that they're two thirds done. Um, so, do 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 do. Um, the, let me get my cream, etc., over here since it's gonna come in this direction anyway. Waiter, there's a fly in my soup. I think a piece of parsley flew into the cream. Waiter, what's this fly doing in my soup? Why, it looks like the backstroke. Um, okay, we've got our parsley. Uh, now what we're gonna do over here with the uh, people aren't allowed machine guns in Canada legally. Yay, Canada. Um, the... Uh, potatoes, we're going to drain this. The premise is that to drain the uh, liquid out of this uh, leek and potatoes, but not all of it. Um, if you want to keep some of the wine flavor. So uh, that's kind of a vague instruction to me, but we're good with bow and arrow. Knock yourself out. Get all Katniss Everdeen out there. I was never good with that. I took archery in like, you know, uh, what it's called, uh, summer camp. The quasi summer camp thing I did. And was, I just kept smacking my forearm. I don't know how people do that. Um, I just go snap and it would land right there. And I, I did not imagine that. No, we don't have bow and arrows here much. They have a, a python hunt. Because, um, I don't know if you know, like in the Everglades, it's a thing that uh, people, uh, part of one of the problems in the Everglades in Florida in general is uh, exotic species taking over. People bringing in plants from an animal's, the fly breath stroke. The fly breath stroke. But I'm good with bow and arrow. That's swimming. Pocahontas. Aha, okay. Um, no, but invasive species, people bring in the plants and they take over and they kill the native plants and it's a big problem. And with animals, that happens too. And what particularly happened is people had their uh, Burmese pythons as pets and that's, you know, whatever. Um, they weren't supposed to, you know, bring them in the state, but they did anyway, which is okay until Hurricane Andrew hit in 1992 and then, you know, things blew away and all these snakes went ah into the Everglades and they said, oh, we like it here. And they found all these things to kill. And so now you cannot find deer, raccoon, you know, any small mammals because the pythons have, you know, eaten them all. 
So uh, they sponsor a hunt to go out, people to go out there and find the Burmese pythons um, every year. And it's crazy. People come back with these pythons that are like, you know, 20 feet long. Um, they just line them up and you just can't believe it. Um, so, uh, hey, thank you for the uh, like, Tina. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, it's, it's, it's wacky. Uh, a friend of ours did a doc, uh, worked out a documentary about the python hunt. And it's, you know, there's a bounty on them or not, and there's a whole bragging rights, and it's all very complicated. Uh, Diana, how you doing? Hello, thanks for liking the restream. We are making our pape vadoie. Hello, honey. Hello. Um, which is a sausage, leek, and potato hot pot. One pot dish. And time is up on our potatoes over here, and now it is a magic time uh, for this too. So let me uh, clear out some space in the sink behind you here. Okay, so I'm gonna try this over here without doing it in the sink. Because I want to save some of the... Uh... Hi, sweetie. Hello. Mm. Nice haircut. Thank you. Um, some of the liquid here from this. So let me uh, record this for posterity. Okay, so we're gonna try to drain this. You know, oh, I do smell Swiss cheese, don't I? Swiss, no you don't. Why? Oh, I, I smell cheese. Uh, there's no cheese. Now the person who wrote this recipe said that, you know what, I shouldn't be using this plastic thing, I don't think. Um, he uh, said that uh, he looked for all these other recipes and all the other ones he found were all like laden with cheese, etc., etc., hot, and uh, didn't want to, um, you know, so I wanted to lessen the, that. I did not find a single recipe for this that had cheese anywhere. So I don't know what the guy was getting at. I do not. Okay. So, we have drained you, and now we have drained it, uh, I think it, uh, yes. So we put this back in the pot, second bowl. Uh -huh. uh, for, um, it's gonna be for five minutes more uh, to simmer, but I want some liquid. So we're getting some liquid back. So, too hot? No, not too hot. Okay. So, um, yep, five more minutes. I feel like I just stepped into Oktoberfest. Yes. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. So, we're letting that simmer for another five minutes uh, with just a little liquid. to retain the wine flavor, and I guess the rest of this is going. Say goodbye. Oh, the uh, white wine. Yes. There was white wine and beef broth in there. Um, I'm gonna take the uh, spare. Spare. Uh, I'll just do this. Take the... Uh, Sausages out of the other water. Again, um, these would be uh, prick the potatoes with a fork. Um, I'll do that when the next step. You to see how dumb they are. Because yes, yeah, another five minutes, and then there's gonna be cream on it. It'll be another four minutes. So, um, but we'll, I will check that. I will. Let me dump the uh, water on this though. You came home with just the right one? Just the right Yes, time. you did. Uh, to see if they're done, indeed. What the heck, why not? I'll do it now. Okay. So, this other colander you didn't really use? No, I did use that for something else. So, okay. Oh yeah, they're definitely done. 
Here, have one. You like? Try it. You like it? Yeah. Uh, mm. Good, yeah. I was saying. I, I say I was saying. Very nutmeggy. Mm. <coughs> could have more salt. It really could. Hey, Carrie Osborne, thank you for liking the restream. So good seeing you. Um, but we'll deal with that later on. Um, I forgot my train of thought now. Mmm, yummy. Yes. Very nutmeggy. I can taste the leeks behind the potatoes. In fact, let me taste the leek. Yes, it's on simmer. Making sure I didn't accidentally turn off the stove. More for you. For you? For you for me. For you? For you. Good. It would be better with more fusion. What the heck, I'll add it now. Again, I've, I finally learned the lesson to not be uh, stingy. Welcome to the Kit Kat. I said, I'm talking to the key. Uh, by the way, if you're a Snapchatter person and you'd like to be my Snapchat friend, if I have more friends on Snapchat, I will. I will snap more. But uh, if you are, direct message me on um, Twitter or Facebook or whatever is your pref, and uh, I will give you my uh, Snapchat username. It's the one thing that's not like the Cliff Cliffy Land thing. I should set up an account for the Cliffy Land thing. But hey. Okay. Uh, another, what, minute or so? Meanwhile, I'm gonna get some water. Because I may or may not have burned the top of my mouth. Drunk a little bit. A little bit. Where's our St. Bernard? Oh no, I have to keep talking. Okay, so it's time. The time has come to, uh, Take the next step. So now, you know, Clifford, you just added salt and pepper and you didn't taste it a second time. A smart person will taste it a second time. Okay, one more time. Here we go. Airplane coming in. Open wide. Better. Okay, so now we're adding the cream. And stir. Can you see from there? I can't put you on the hot burner. Yeah, that's a little better. You probably like that better than the white uh, skillet since the whole camera issue. Eek. And uh, so now uh, we add the sausages. And uh, put them on top. Camera. And uh, we're going to let that simmer for another uh, three to four minutes. Uh, there is the Lederhosen. Uh, I don't have Lederhosen. Though we have several friends that do have Lederhosen. I could ready. Oktoberfest, they were all like decked out. 
They just have to like dig into the closet. Me, not so much. Where I used to live in Columbus, they had a uh, Oktoberfest, uh, big, uh, because I think called German Village, which is a rather a famous German neighborhood. Um, there's a a, rest, a German restaurant there, um, which is so famous that uh, I don't know if you probably don't follow American politics, but uh, the primaries in the presidential races, Ohio is like one of the most important states because it's like, you know, 50-50. And so every presidential candidate comes through, they always have to go to that one German restaurant and eat like the big fatty, you know, some dessert thing. Um, and then take pictures of people in Lederhosen. Martina, hey, thank you for the like and the restream. So, uh, yeah. We went there a couple times. I think I took my parents there. No, I think, no, we were outside there. We didn't go in. But I did go eat there once. They had, um, they tried to have tryouts for the TV show The Biggest Loser at that location. <coughs> But, which seemed kind of appropriate, considering their food. It's very, very heavy food. But they had to shut down the, uh, the auditions, because they physically could not fit the people in the restaurant, which was weird. So, that's German. This is Swiss. We have bell ringers, we have chocolate. So, oh, recipes, Swiss recipes. A million things I found that were all like breads, which I don't normally make, uh, desserts, which I really don't make, uh, or soups, which I try not to make. So that made things a little tricky. Uh, who we got here? Um, Arc Fabio, thank you very much for the restream, Fabio. So uh, we're waiting another few minutes on this uh, for that to be ready, and then we will be ready to plate, so I might as well uh, Get my plates ready. Do you want to watch it? Uh, you can see from there. Okay. Mm. Happy Friday. I got my hairs did. I made the tornado warning. Actually, before the tornado warning. But all is well. Swiss chocolate, Swiss stinking, Swiss miss, Swiss beets, it's tricky. Looks fabulous, thank you. The guy who did it, um, the guy who did it is, is good, he's a nice guy, and he does a really good job, and he hasn't done it for a while, so I'm, I was glad to get him. But uh, you know, I know I could ask for a specific person every time and make an appointment, but I just never do that. Dinner and your hers. <laughs> Um, the, uh, hers did, got my Neil's did, um, uh, but no, I, I never asked for the same person, even though I know, you know, which one is better than the one I prefer, because, uh, I mean, I'm, like, exceedingly loyal, but I know there's the whole thing with, uh, you know, barbers and hairdressers and whatever that, you know, you stick with that person and you have to stick with that person for life. And uh, as much as I like a particular person, I just can't do that again. It's weird. It's like having like like having a bad divorce, like with your hairdresser. So now I just take I, you know I always take pot luck. I'm always afraid. It's like that Seinfeld episode. There was a guy who a uh, place I used to work you know, many, many, many years ago. Guy would come in and he was a barber. War history, Red Cross, watches and cheese. Oh, watches, yes. Oh, and the Alps, yes. Forgot about the watches. 
Uh, but no, a guy who was a barber would come into where I used to work, and he was a, a like a real jerk of a person, and super annoying. But he'd be in every freaking single day, and uh, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't really getting my hair done at a particular place. Um, and uh, and then he said, "Why don't you get your hair cut with me?" And I said, "Oh, well, there's a guy I go to that I'm um, loyal to." Because oh, I understand loyalty. I understand loyalty. So um. You know, you keep going to that guy. And at some point I got tired of driving down into the city to get my hair cut. Army knife, yes, Swiss Army knife. Um, but he said, uh, uh, I got tired and I said, oh, what the hell, you know, you can cut my hair. And he cut my hair and he did a really bad job. And then I felt stuck and I had to keep going to him month after month. And he, I said, he does such a bad job. I don't want to get him to cut my hair anymore. And then finally I went somewhere else and got my hair cut and he came into the work and he saw I'd got my hair cut. I said, you got your, who cut your hair? And I said, somebody else. And he said, why? And I said, I was just, you know, somewhere else. And he, he literally tried to choke me. It was so strange. The guy was unhinged. JK Lee, thank you for the uh, like there. We we're almost ready here with our dinner. You know, I cleaned off the counter, and I forgot I have one more step where I'm going to need to go over there for it. Uh, that was four, three, four minutes. I think we are good on that. So, uh, the uh, one recipe did not say specifically what to do about the sausages. However, that's bizarre. Yeah. The guy was nuts. Crazy nuts. I think I finally said, no, I, I don't think I had the guts to say, I really think you do a crappy job cutting hair. I don't think I said that. But he was just bonkers. Okay, so we're taking out the sausage. Uh, now this recipe didn't say what to do about the sausage and made it sound like you just, you know, here, have a sausage. Uh, yet, I found a uh, YouTube video of uh, them making this dish, and uh, they cut the sausage. They cut the sausage at the end. Yeah, lots of crazy people. Dadaism. <laughs> I don't know how much you know about Dadaism, but when I was learning about it, one of the phrases was, uh, uh, was it? Other people give you shit. We give you shit in rainbow colors. Uh, so we're gonna cut our sausage. Eat your slices. And we're gonna do it quickly. I don't think I needed this huge knife for this. Oom pa pa, oom pa pa, that's how it goes. Okay, that's one. Crazy, crazy, crazy. You crazy lady, you crazy. That was a guy. It was a guy Barbara did. Yeah. You know, I kind of blanked on his name. But it was, yeah, it's an Italian name, so but if, if, some, if someone said to me, I'd be like, oh yeah, him. But there was that Seinfeld episode about basically the same thing that aired like about a week after that happened. And I was thinking, oh my God, were they following me around with the camera? It was crazy that the, the same thing happened on Seinfeld that happened to me, like, it, like a week apart. That's how long ago this was. I like sausages, but I find it so salty. Um, yeah, they can be. Uh, so here we go. Moving quickly. Okay, we will move move this entire operation over here. Okay, and now you, you can go here and watch as we plate. Uh, I need my scoop. 
Wow, I cannot believe dinner is for the second time in a row exactly on time. This must be a record. Two times on time for me. Alert the media. This is very heavy. Just switch hands. We're losing my balance anyway. Ah, nuts! Ah, double nuts. Hold on. <clears throat> Clean up on all five. Here, continuing on that theme. Thank you for the applause. Okay, let's see if I get better balance on this big old skillet here. Ugh. Okay, and we're back. So it could be leftovers or very few leftovers or no leftovers. I hate leaving this little bit in the pan, but that's what's gonna happen. And sausages on top. There must be a better way than doing this. Spreading out the sausages, and now you. Okay. Uh, you might have um, got in touch with the uh, Sausage King on Blab. He's got a factory. Huh, interesting. See, one of the things I was thinking of while I was pondering that whole thing is uh, making my own sausage because sausages come up several times and I'm like, well, if I had the machinery to, you know, I mean, I'm sure I could get sausage casings. So I'm putting parsley on top here. Um, uh, I, I'd like to try to make my own sausage. I mean, can't be that hard if you have the machinery. I saw them doing it on Amazing Race. Just getting it into the little casings. Ta-da! There we go. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Take care of my knife quickly. And I keep meaning to go on Blab. I mean, I, it's just... I never have a time where I just want to stop and, you know, have a group conversation with people. I'm usually busy, like, writing or doing something else. So, let me take my picture before I forget. You're not the prettier one. I like your sister better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you're just prettier. Okay. Now... We show off the food, yeah? Yeah. We should say, um, bonjour. Looks good, enjoy, thank you. Uh, who we got here? Uh, Ricardo, Ricardo, my good man, how you been? Thank you for the like, long time no see. So we have our, um, gotta get the words right again. The Pape Vaudois, our sausage, leek, and potato hot pot. So we've got our potatoes and leeks. Uh, with our uh, bratwurst, it should be the uh, Vaud sausage, the uh, cabbage sausage from Switzerland, but we couldn't find that. So unfortunately, we had to go with the pork sausage, the um, bratwurst instead, but looks very yummy, tastes very yummy. 
Uh, so that's it for night one of Switzerland. Thank you very much for uh, joining. Uh, look for us on Sunday night for night two. So this is the French part of Switzerland. We're going to do a night on the German part and a night on the Italian part. So thank you very much, Derek. Thank you, Anne Marie. Thank you, Junior. Thank you for the like. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, uh, Anne Marie. Thank you, everyone. Um, Danny, everyone, thank you for coming by. Uh, again, follow here, follow on Meerkat, on Twitter, on Tumblr, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be super cool. Um, so catch you Sunday for part two. Thank you and good night.